Hi, this is Janet with Paper and Spark. Welcome to part three of the video tutorial for the inventory spreadsheet for batch sellers and high volume makers. In this video, I'm going to cover how to enter your inventoryable materials and supplies into this spreadsheet. So as a handmade seller, you are in a unique position because not only are you creating handmade finished goods for sale and those finished goods are considered inventory to you, but the raw materials and supplies that go into those finished goods are also considered part of your inventory. So you've gotta be tracking it a certain way, you wanna be recording the cost per unit a certain way, and you're gonna to have to report that for taxes a certain way too. So this spreadsheet is set up to make reporting those numbers for taxes a lot easier for you and it's set up to help you figure out your cost of goods so that you can price your items profitably as well. So I'm going to show you how to enter raw materials and supplies in here as if you've got like a blank slate, you're just starting out with your business and you're just starting out with a spreadsheet. I know that a lot of us are buying this spreadsheet um, at some point into our business journey and you might already have raw materials and supplies that you need to enter in here straight away. They might even be from a prior year purchase. That's totally fine. We're gonna cover that too in a separate video. It's also covered in Appendix A and Appendix B of the PDF instructions that come with your spreadsheet. So ideally, and I say ideally with a lot of idealism, you wanna be entering your raw material and supply purchases consistently. That is one of the hardest things to do is stay on top of entering that kind of stuff. So whether you do it on a weekly or a monthly basis, just try and stay on top of it because it can get really overwhelming really fast if you fall behind and then you're trying to enter like a year's worth of material purchases into your spreadsheet. So step one, Let's say I'm going to enter some fabric purchases. You wanna to navigate to whatever tab, whatever material tab you're working with. So I'm going to my fabric and then just enter a simple description for it. I do not actually sew, so it's always hard for me to come up with examples. <laughs> okay, you might want to enter an ID number. You might want to enter color, size, or shape. All of these are just like optional descriptions of what may apply to whatever raw material and supply you're entering. It's just to make your life easier so that you can find this item again when you're looking for it, especially if you're dealing with a lot of different materials and supplies, but you don't have to enter these if you don't want to. At the very least, enter a description. Um, please, if you don't need these columns, don't hide column E because you won't be able to see this important purchase up here, but you can hide columns B and C if you want. You just select them, right click and go to hide, and then you don't have to see them anymore. But you do wanna keep shape here because you wanna be able to get this total. Alternatively, if you want to rename these guys to be something else because you have some other aspect of your material that you want to keep track of, that's fine. You can just type over these and put whatever descriptor there you want to be able to put, okay? You can also enter the source, which is where you purchased it from. You can enter other comments like maybe a receipt number or a note to yourself or whatever right here. This is also great if you need to keep up with CPSC requirements. You can um, rename these to be you know, the lead content or the flammability or the SKU or whatever you need to track, you can do in the columns that are already here by renaming them, or you can even insert new columns if you want. And you can do that by just highlighting wherever you wanna insert the column. See how my cursor turns into this little down arrow up here? Let's say I wanna put in a new column to track some sort of compliance related aspect right here. I can highlight column B by clicking on the B, right click and then insert, and I've got a new column here to put in whatever stuff I wanna be tracking, right? It's pretty simple and very customizable. All right, one other quick thing I'll point out right here with the date of purchase. Unlike my inventory cost and pricing 
spreadsheet for one of a kind makers, the original version of the spreadsheet, if you happen to be familiar with that, this spreadsheet is not reliant on dates. So you can enter a date here to help you keep track of this, but you don't have to. It's not going to affect anything else on the spreadsheet. So once you've got your new product description stuff entered in here the way that you want it, the next big thing is to enter the cost of what you actually paid. So I went to Joann's and I bought three yards of this fabric and I spent 36 bucks on those three yards. So I would enter 36 bucks here as the cost. And then I wanna say that I bought three yards of this material. The kicker is, is that you've always gotta be paying attention to the units that you purchased. So, at the end of the year, you're gonna to wanna to know the units that you have left. So you wanna make it easy for you to measure at the end of the year. If I am making dresses, chances are with fabric, I'm using random size pieces according to my pattern. I might be left with like half of a yard. I could be left with a quarter of a yard. I could be left with some really weird amount. So a lot of times with fabric, we like to enter square inches. You might be dealing with something like paint or yarn or seed beads, something that you want to enter in ounces. You might be entering something that is determined by weight. You might be entering something where you're literally counting it, like maybe you've got blank onesies and you're literally just entering that you bought 20 onesies. Um, there's lots of different ways to do units purchased. You want to enter it in a unit of measurement that makes sense for you and whatever you're creating and is going to make life easier when it comes time to measure what's remaining at year end. So whatever unit you use here is what unit you've got to be able to use here. All right. You don't want to put square inches here and then yards here. That's not going to work. Also, you don't have to use the same unit of measurement across the entire tab. I can do square inches here, and I can do yards here, and I can do ounces here, and so on and so on if I wanted to. You just need to be consistent across your row. A lot of times I have people, especially fabric people, ask me, I don't know how to measure square inches. So here is what I like to do. If you Google square inches converter or calculator on Google, you will get this. So it will convert lots of different things for you. And what I'm going to say is that I bought three yards of an item and I wanna know how many square inches that is. Now, if you know math, which you may not know math, no one really likes to know math, so that's fine, I'm not judging you. What you could do here, if you wanted to calculate it on the calculator instead, you bought three yards, right? How many square inches is that? Well, there's 36 inches in a yard width by 36 inches in a yard length. Okay, so that's width times length, 36 times 36. That's how many square inches are in one yard. And then if I bought three yards, I multiply that by three and I still get 3888. But if you wanna just plug into this handy calculator, just bookmark this guy um, and now you know. So if you wanna do square inches, you, you can say you bought 3,888 square inches of this sunflower fabric and you can even make a note to yourself that that's the unit that you put so you don't get confused. This isn't square feet, this isn't square yards, it's square inches. So when I update it, I need to be measuring for square inches. So now that you've got a cost entered and your units purchase entered, you'll notice that the spreadsheet is going to automatically calculate your cost per unit. So this is just telling me, hey, Janet, every square inch of your sunflower fabric cost you $0.0093. So now I know anything that I make, I'll be able to figure out the cost of sunflower fabric in that item based on this cost per unit. All right, next we're gonna see this weird red column here, purchase included on previous tax return. This column is not needed for when you are entering new inventory and you're new to this spreadsheet and this is your first year in business or whatnot. 
this is just going to be left blank. So I've got this special note here that says leave blank if the answer is no. Now, if you are catching up on inventory purchased on a previous year, if you are entering inventory um, from a prior inventory spreadsheet or from a prior year in general, you might need to put something here. All of this is covered in Appendix A or in the next optional video for how you catch up your spreadsheet from prior year purchases. But if you're just entering a current year inventory purchase, you want to just leave this blank. Don't type no, just leave it blank if the answer is no. And then you'll notice when you enter units here, your units remaining is going to update and your cost of units remaining is gonna be equal to that purchase. And that is pretty much how you go about entering a raw material or supply into your spreadsheet.